Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Stefan and in this video I want to show you how to play a dozen a day book one which is called primary or preliminary in some other editions, the blue book, uh, the first group, the first 12 exercises. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so and if you like what you see give us a thumbs up. If you have been following me, I've talked about this book before and it's a very good technical book for beginners because the exercises are quite short, easy to read, but they really make your fingers move in many different ways. So not stuck in one certain position like legato scales, like for ABRSM, you've got here staccato, hand position changes and hand crossovers and all kinds of things. And they are very manageable chunks of music. But if you do them wrong or not with the correct technique or correct um, expression, then they are not actually as useful as they are supposed to be. So in this video, I'm going to show you the first 12 exercises and talk you through some of the key points that you need to know when you approach these exercises. So let's start. Group one, number one, walking. As the name says, it's going to be fairly slow going in crotchets or quarter notes. It's a simple five note scale and um, it's going to have a little three note scale at the end. Let me demonstrate it first and then I talk you through it. So five note scale, identical in both hands, but an octave apart. Right hand starts on the middle C, left hand on the C, an octave down. The exercise can be played legato or detached. I would say legato is more beneficial, but if you want, you can play it detached notes. But again, legato sounds better and it's better for your hands as well. So you go up five notes and back down, and then you've got three note scale, C, D, E, D, C, C, and then you repeat it and you rest on the C. The notes are very straightforward. The only thing you have to watch technically in this exercise is to keep the hands curved in a nice rounded shape to make sure the hands are not static when you play. So, but the hand moves up and down with the melody. We call this wrist circles. It's much more comfortable to play like that because the hand doesn't feel so restricted, but it also sounds more musical and nicer. So always make sure you let the hand and the wrist move with the melody, follow it, lead the melody when it goes up and down. When you play it hands together, be very careful the two hands go down perfectly together, as opposed to, things like that I've heard in the past. And of course, needless to say, make it very even all the way through. So instead of going fast, slowing down, fast, slowing down. So start very slowly and get it even. And that's all you need to know about this first exercise. And uh, like with all of these exercises in this book, you can challenge yourself and shift up your hand. And what that means, I'm going to show it once with this exercise, but you can do this with any of the first 12 exercises. You start in the C position, and then you move up one note, both hands, to the D, so from the C you shift up your hand again, one finger on each note, and you repeat it with the same finger numbers and the same pattern, but starting from D. Then you move up again, and so on. So you can repeat it eight times until you get to the next C, and this is called a sequence, and it helps you to play the, the melody in many different keys, thinking about the intervals and the finger numbers instead of the actual note names. Exercise number two, running. Let me demonstrate it, and then I talk you through it. So almost completely identical to number one, but as the name says, it needs to go faster. So this one is in quavers or, or eighth notes, and that's going to be twice as fast as the crotchets. So whatever your speed was in walking, running has to be twice as fast. 
And the exact same things apply as what I said in walking. So legato, curved fingers, moving in wrist circles, but going a little bit faster. So less motion and more dexterity in the fingers, but nothing else really to talk about it. Number three, skipping. Now, number one and number two was stepwise motion. So going one note after each other. Skipping is, as the name says, skipping notes. Let me demonstrate it and then I talk you through it. So um, here we're going to skip notes. Skip means when you go from C to E, for example, you're skipping D. So that's a skip. And another skip from E would be G because we're skipping the F. So this is going in skips because we always skip one note, very straightforward. Again, starting in the C position, five on the C, one on the middle C, and again, going together, So lifting the fingers a little bit higher, just to make sure that these two, the two and the four, don't go down anywhere. So one, three, and five in both hands. And as you could see, I was slightly rotating my arm to get the weight from one note to the other. So again, I'm not keeping it static, but a little bit of rotation and movement again to accommodate the change, the pattern of the notes going up and going down and skipping. And this is crucial, whatever you do with these exercises, to not keep stiff hands, because that can lead to tension and it also doesn't sound good. So always following the melody, letting the hand move with the melody. And you can do obviously the same thing, shift up and repeat. Shift up again and repeat. It's a different kind of muscle motion where you don't go note by note, but you skip. And it's very important to practice both. Number four, jumping. Let me demonstrate it and then I'll talk you through it. So jumping, as the name says, is staccato. So when you see the little dots under these notes, it's called staccato and you have to play it very bouncy. Now, staccato should start a little bit easier, but this exercise actually combines finger staccato with forearm staccato. When you play notes, single note staccato, you want to flick them like it's something really hot, like a stove, like flicking from the fingers. And when you play very fast, you don't want to move your hand too much. You play mostly from the fingers. And we call that finger staccato. However, when you play big chords, like the C major chord, you can't do it as a finger staccato and the whole arm has to work and bounce up. So you need a, a lot more weight and a lot more energy to go into those chords. And it's a different kind of motion. Like, bounce up and the whole body goes up with the, with the forearm as well. So the notes are C, rest, C, rest, C, E, rest, rest, chord, rest, rest, hold. Now, key thing when you play double notes or chords is that you play them at the same time. So for example, the C and E has to sound like that instead of where the thumb goes down sooner or the other finger. And the same applies to this um, C major chord. Sometimes it can sound like this. Or all the fingers go down. So you really have to concentrate to get one, three, and five very cleanly at the same time. Again, start very slowly, count one, two, three, four, or say note, rest, note, rest. Exercise number five, the splits. Very similar to exercise number two, running, but something is different. Let me demonstrate it first. So as you could see, my hands were going away from each other and coming together, away from each other and coming together, just like 
the splits on the image. And this is called contrary motion, contrary motion, when the hands move away from each other. And both thumbs are going to start on the middle C, so you have to kind of fit them onto the same note, both hands, and you go out, two, three, four, five, coming back, three, two, one, two, three, four, five, four, three, two, one, and then jumping to the next C, this one, and the high C, and you really have to practice that jump to be able to catch it very quickly. Now, as you could see, my hand again was moving in wrist circles for this exercise, so don't keep your hand static, let it move with the melody, so the hands move away from each other, come back, move away, come back, and that's the splits. Exercise number six, deep breathing. Let me demonstrate it first. So in my view, this one should come before the jumping exercise because it teaches you how to play that chord that you already played in exercise four. So starting in the C position, both hands, so one and five on the C, we're skipping one, three, five, and then the three notes together. And you can take a deep breath. And down, left hand heavy, and then together, one, two, three, one, two, three, jump. So you need this kind of heaviness of the arms into these chords, especially when they go down together, and again, thinking about clarity to make sure the two hands and all the notes in those chords, all six notes go down perfectly and cleanly together. Exercise number seven is a big favorite, cartwheels. Let me demonstrate it first. So that was how it's in the book, but how I like to play it is this. much nicer and very, very enjoyable sound. So what this does is you see that long line going from the left hand all the way to the right hand and that high C has LH over it. And this is called hand crossing. And the easiest way to practice it is first we're gonna get back into the C position, C, E, G, C, E, G. And we're going to play it as a chord. So C chord, C chord, and then the left hand crosses over to the high C and right hand middle C. Back to the C chord. Right hand, crossing over, and crossing over, under. So if you do it like this, which is called blocked practice, because you play the chords as a block, then you really practice the motion, the, the crossing over motion instead of the actual notes. And what you need to understand about this crossing over is the purpose of it is to make it feel like the two hands are one. So when a broken chord like this or a, an arpeggio is broken in between two hands, you don't want to hear any kind of gap in between like this. You want to feel like it's all one continuous move. because then it sounds nicer and more musical. So as soon as the left hand starts, the right hand perfectly comes in on time and you don't lift up the left hand to G until you press down the C. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three. And when you start playing the right hand first, no, the left hand is already coming across. So you don't want to do this cross very quickly. You want to give yourself enough time to cross over nicely, three beats to do that and come back. And 
Since this is only a C major chord, you can press down the right pedal, the damper pedal. If you only have one pedal, just press down the one pedal, hold it down for the whole exercise and it's going to sound much nicer, more connected. What you can do is shift up one note to the D and repeat the same thing. And shift up, shift up until you get to C and it's a beautiful exercise, it almost sounds like a little piece. Exercise number eight is deep knee bend. And this one is all about jumping and estimating measurements or distances on the keyboard. Let me demonstrate it first. Now this exercise, needless to say, is much easier if you've got big hands and you can reach between the octave, the C and the low C. If you've got small hands, you will have to jump and it's much harder because you have to memorize that distance. But in my case, because I can reach it, I can keep my two fingers over the C and C and... and just basically move between the octave. So really, uh, letting the hand muscles memorize what an octave is, how far it is, the two notes from each other. So when it comes up in a piece, you don't have to look at your hands. They will know exactly how far down to go when you see an octave. Exercise number nine, hopping on right foot. Uh, let me demonstrate it first and then I talk about it. So again, I think this should have come before number four because number four kind of combined finger staccato and forearm staccato. This exercise is only finger staccato because we've got a single note melody. It's a couple of skips and then stepwise motion coming down and again, flicking the keys, almost like the keys are really hot and you want to come away from them and just working from the fingers. very light, fluffy cloud staccatos. Number 10, hopping on the left foot, identical, but for the left hand. So same thing, and again, same lightness, and very, very sharp staccatos, flicking the keys like they are really hot, and keeping it very even. Number 11, standing on head. You recognize the tune, it's a scale, a C major scale, and the exercise is trying to prepare you for it. So ev in every bar you go one note higher, and this one includes a thumb crossing, which is something quite difficult to do if you've never done it before. So you start one on the C, two, three, and when you get to three, you're going to put your thumb under onto the F and carry on and finish on the A. The second time, do the same thing, cross under, but finish on the B. And the final time you start again, cross under, and finish on the high C. And that's the final C major scale going from C to C. So one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. Exercise 12, fit as a fiddle and ready to go. So it's a little song, you can even sing along if you want, it has some words, and as you can see the right hand combines skips and then a a little five note scale going up, then the same skips and a five note scale coming down. So kind of a revision of what we learned in the first few exercises, but with words on if you want to sing along. Left hand is sustaining the C, 
one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, wrist circles, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, coming down, one, two, three, four. And that's exercise number 12. If you have any questions about these first group exercises, leave them in the comments and check back for group two, three, four, and five. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, subscribe for more.